What is going on everybody? Today we are going to be talking about the global settings within the Unity 6. There is a few options within the global settings, which are the Unity 6 options, MIDI, and then the loops. So today we want to dig in, in detail in each one of those three different options and show you what can be programmed within the Unity 6 and then also what each feature does. So at the time of this recording, we are on version 1.0.3. And if you're watching this video, we may be on a new version. So the global settings may look different than what you're seeing now, but uh, we will make future video updates if there's anything that we change or add to this. So let's go ahead and dig in. In order to access the global settings, we must tap the center of the screen and that brings up your programming menu. So of course, today we're talking about global settings. So we are going to go into global settings. And then here's our three menus we were talking about, the Unity 6, Loops, and MIDI. So let's jump into the Unity 6. And then here we have three options to choose from. Okay, so we have max number of banks. As you can see, this is a slider that we can grab. You can touch anywhere along there, um, and you can adjust things just like this, like we've shown you before, individuals or uh, grabbing on the slider. So what this does is this sets the number of banks that the pedal will scroll through when you are using the foot switches. And this only applies to the foot switches. If you were to program a message to say the BPM knob and you wanted to jump to another bank, that is perfectly fine. You still have access to all 127 banks. This is just for scrolling presets up and down. So let's give you a little overview of what that looks like. So right now we have max number of banks as nine. So we go back home. Okay, so as we've mentioned in previous videos, these two buttons bank up and these two bank down. You can do a short press to bank one at a time or a long press to fast scroll. And for this example, we set our max banks to nine. So let's just go ahead and scroll forwards, six, seven, eight, nine. And then the next press will start you back over to bank one. And of course you can go backwards. And then as mentioned before, you hold down the tap switch to activate that bank. So setting the max number of banks will do just that. It shows you how many banks you can scroll through on your pedal. So let's go back into the Unity 6 settings. I will reset this back to 127. And then let's move on to the Uniport. So these are Uniports 1 through 4 on the back. And to program a Uniport, you would first select the Uniport that you want to select. So in this case, number 2. As you can see, I already have it programmed for an expression pedal. Uh, when you click on that, you can pick between any of these options. So let's explain a little bit about what these options do. Uh, MIDI type A is the MIDI standard for TRS, um, for quarter inch TRS. That is what you can use for several pedals, including all of the pedals from Jet Pedals, like our Revelation. Um, and then you have MIDI tip active, MIDI ring active, and then MIDI type B. You would wanna check with each one of your pedal manufacturers to see which type of MIDI that um, they need to accept over TRS and then you can just set this to whichever MIDI type version for that pedal. And then as I mentioned before, we have an expression pedal as an option, and then we have tap div one and tap div two. Uh, these are your different tap divisions that will be sent out via the Uniport. So in our programming menu, which we will go into a deep dive of that and explain the details of the tap div, but kind of for this overview video, you can select two different Uniports each with their own specific tap division. So you could be controlling, uh, let's say two different delay pedals with their own tap tempo port on there. So tap div one, you could set to a quarter note and then tap div two, you could set to a dotted eight. And then you would kind of have that uh, dual delay setting where if you ran them in the left or the right channel, or like if you ran them both in the series and you would get that cascading delay, kind of like the halo delay from Keeley Electronics. So again, this is how you would program our Uniports. For this case, we left that as Expression Pedal 2. And as a recap, you would just pick the port, and this is MIDI port type A, and then you come in here and just adjust your settings. Maybe you want that as Tab Div. And just as we've mentioned in videos before, every setting is automatically saved in permanent memory. So if you just select the right Uniport, you'll notice that goes back to Expression. Um, one is MIDI type A, and then we had three is tap div one. So everything's saved in global settings. So that is how you adjust the uniports within the Unity 6 settings. 
And now we want to talk about buffered input or unbuffered input. So we have one single input on the Unity 6, and then you can select whether that is a buffered input or an unbuffered input. And then from the input jack, it goes directly connecting to your, your six loops. So let's say you had maybe a, an old vintage fuzz pedal that really doesn't like buffered inputs. You would go ahead and select the switch here, which unchecks the buffered input and then now you have an unbuffered input so your guitar signal is connected directly into the loop sections here and then your fuzz pedal will act uh, more appropriately and will respond much better but in most cases if you're not using a vintage fuzz or a pedal that really wants to see the impedance directly from your guitar input you would want to choose a buffered input and the reason why we do that is if you have a long guitar cable coming into your pedal board or you are running through a few pedals before you reach the Unity 6, you want to make sure you buffer that input so you have the full input signal strength running into all of your additional loops. So 99% of the time we would leave buffered input on, unless of course you have something like a vintage fuzz that just isn't getting along with that buffered input and then you can turn that off. So that is how we use the settings within the Unity 6. And then now let's move on to the MIDI settings. There's only a few options in here. And this is the Unity 6 MIDI channel. So if you're going to be sending MIDI into the Unity 6, you want to know what uh, channel the Unity 6 is going to be listening to. So from the factory, it is set by default at 16. But again, you can use the slider or the plus or minus buttons to change whatever MIDI channel you would like to assign to your Unity 6. And then next we have assign pedals to MIDI channels. So this is where you would label which pedal you have assigned to each MIDI channel. So in, in this instance, uh, MIDI channel one is just set up to our default channel one. But if we come in here and pull up two, you can see that we have already programmed or you can see that we've already labeled MIDI channel two as our HX stomp. And then if you saw our previous video, we also had MIDI channel three as the revelation. So let's say we want to assign a name to MIDI channel one. We just select that channel, click on your input, and then your, your text box shows up. So we just remove this here, and then let's call this Eternity. So we'll say E, N, I, T, Y. So oh, we had a goof up there. We just backtrack Eternity. And then as soon as we hit that, it is saved. And then now when we pull up HX stop is in channel two. And if we want to go back to channel one, we will see that Eternity is now in channel one. So that is how you name which pedals are assigned to each MIDI channel. And then when programming the Unity 6, you can now, instead of selecting the channel, you'll be able to see your pedal name, which makes programming a little bit more faster and more streamlined. And then the last option here is the MIDI through on and off switch. In most cases, you're gonna want that MIDI through set to off. Let's say you are using another MIDI controller to send MIDI into the Unity 6 but you also want that MIDI information to pass through the Unity 6 and on down the line to the rest of your pedal board, then you would wanna turn MIDI through to on. That way we, it can receive any messages and then relay those out to your additional pedals. Just make sure that if you have MIDI through on, you don't make a complete loop with your MIDI chain. Then once you send a MIDI message, it's gonna to continue to send all the way through your pedals and that loop will continue on forever and you will likely lock up your Unity 6 as well as other pedals on your board. So just be careful when you're turning on the MIDI through. Um, if, if this Unity 6 is your main MIDI controller and you're only using the MIDI out port, then just leave MIDI through off. Okay, so now let's talk about using the loops menu within global settings. This one is pretty straightforward. It's just three switches. Are we activating loops four through six, yes or no? Um, however, it's really important to know why these are here. So as you know, we have six loops on the Unity 6, and we also share the same three send and return jacks. So loop one can also be four, and loop two can also be five, and loop three can also be six. So when you're not using loops four, five, and six, you're going to use a standard patch cable with just tip and ground. But if you are using additional loops, you wanna make sure to turn those on so then that extra connector or that extra wiring, the ring, the tip ring and sleeve, can now communicate and send the signal appropriately through your loops within the Unity 6. If you have any of these loops turned on 
and you are not using them, you will experience complications with your loops. And it could be uh, anything from signal cutting completely out, or maybe your drives or anything plugged into the loops would sound uh, kind of dull and lifeless and not back to its full potential. So if you do experience any of those issues, make sure you come back in here to the loop settings and make sure these are all turned off if you're not using any one of these additional three loops. Okay, so that is all we have within the global settings. Um, so now that you know how those work, drop us a question down in the comments below. If you have any of those questions, we'll be glad to help you out. And then stay tuned for our next video, which we will take a deep dive into how to program the Unity 6 and how we'd set it up with a full-blown pedal board. So stay tuned and we'll see you guys next time. See ya.